Hello, and welcome to Two Pews in a Pod. Join us as we explore faith in a modern world with the pastors of Evangelical Lutheran Church in Frederick, Maryland. Now here are your hosts, Pastor Paul Baglios and Pastor Ginger Bennett. Hi, I'm Pastor Ginger Bennett. And I'm Paul Baglios. And we'd like to welcome you to this new season of a new podcast that we're going to focus for five episodes on preaching and specifically the sermon. And so we're going to start off with what may seem like a, a basic question, but where to start, but except at the most basic, right? So, so I'm going to pose to you, Paul, what is a sermon anyway? Well, it is a basic question, but an important one. Mm. And when we think about preaching, obviously it is... Let's start again. <laughs> you need to start from the beginning where you start talking. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. You sounded like you were in a cave. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot about it. You're okay. You were moving around earlier. You're good. I didn't notice until you started talking, so that's fine. You're good. Hello. I'm Ginger Bennett. And I'm Paul Baglios. And we'd like to welcome you to uh, this new series in our podcast. This one, we will have five episodes in which we will talk about the sermon. So uh, taking it from the top, maybe even the most basic place to start, um, Paul, what is a sermon anyway? How would you open that up for us? Well, it is a basic question, but very important. Obviously, what is happening in preaching is a kind of public speaking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, But preachers, and I think I can say all preachers, would understand that it is not quite the same as other occasions of public (laughs) speaking. It's not the same as uh, maybe getting up and uh, announcing a football game? (laughs) Well, right. Um, It's not a TED Talk. No, no. It's not a lecture. That's right. Um, It may share certain things in common with other kinds of public speaking. Mm -hmm. But when I think about this, when I think what is a sermon, what is preaching, the way that I approach it is that these are going to be the preacher's words, and if I am the preacher, they're going to be my words, Mm -hmm. and yet somehow those words are to be the vessels or the vehicles of God's word, Mm. that it's not just my voice, my words that people might hear, but that in hearing Mm -hmm. my voice and my words, what might be occurring Right. For them in their experience is that they are hearing the address of God right. to them. Which which is based in the Bible, in scripture, right? That's where we we start. We often think of the Bible as being the word of God, where not this static Bible that is from the past, but uh sort of like from John chapter one, we hear that uh there has in the beginning was the word. The word mm-hmm. was God, and the word was with God. And so then we imagine that word continuing through Jesus, but it doesn't stop and stay static there. As each of us get the scriptures ourselves, we kind of delve in, and and that's where preaching comes in, right? Well, yes, um, God has not ceased speaking, right? Um, One of the ways I sometimes think about this is if you've ever had occasion to look at a collection of letters Mm. written by a person over the course of many years, maybe over the course of their whole lifetime, Mm. um, for historians or biographers, finding such things can be a treasure trove. Mm -hmm. And yet I know, having, having done this, that I can read, let's say, Every piece of correspondence a person may have written throughout their entire lives, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I now know the person. Right. Um, Those those written pieces can be a window into Mm -hmm. the character and the reality of their life, but of course a person is more than a lifetime of their correspondence. Right. And similarly with God and that written correspondence, if you will, that we Mm -hmm. call the Bible. 
Right. We do sometimes refer to the Bible as the Word of God. Right. And it is, but in a qualified way. Right. God is a living God. God continues to speak. Mm -hmm. Scripture can help us to discern and begin to understand the rhythms and mm -hmm. the resonances of the character of God. Mm -hmm. The job of the preacher mm -hmm. is likewise in the words of a sermon mm -hmm. to help people apprehend and experience the character and the rhythms of God drawing near to them. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, I want to put the same question back to you and hear <laughs> how you would answer that very basic but very important question. What is a sermon? Right, because um, you'll notice that like even within this room, just the two of us, two different preachers, have two very different styles of preaching, although both of them are, you know, preaching. They're both sermons, and um, I like to think that both of us are reading those scriptures and figuring out how is God continuing to speak based on what you were talking about a minute ago. And, and I like to think that while we read scripture, and we wrestle with it, at the end of the day, hopefully, we can find good news that will help us so that we can see how, how God walked with these ancestors of ours, right? These saints of old. And how is God walking with us? You know, where is that good news when, gosh, you know, the, the world around me is getting pretty heavy? Where do I find good news? And, and, even in the times that maybe I may feel challenged by what I read, there is still the good news that I'm not on this journey alone. I'm not struggling alone. And I think a really good sermon reminds us of that. You know, it, it connects with our world that we're in and reminds us that even now God is still present, as you said, moving and working among us. And we're not on this journey alone. Well, I'd like to hear you say more about good news. <laughs> and, and I know that when I think of that word, um, think of those two words, think of that term, I can think of lots of examples in my life of good news. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to use a trivial one, good news could be I'm waiting at the auto repair garage <laughs> to find out the verdict, fearing <laughs> that this is going to be a very expensive repair, only to be told, hey, it was covered by warranty, or uh, it wasn't nearly as expensive. Well, that is good news. <laughs> good news could be... But that's not cha life-changing, well, like we hope that Scripture is, So right? that's what I'm, I'm wanting to hear you unpack further, Right. When we talk about this good news in reference to mm -hmm. the Word of God, right. and when we use that word gospel mm -hmm. for the good news, mm -hmm. how is that good news something different than the good news of, um, let's say, uh, the results of a biopsy right. that we were frightened while we awaited? Mm -hmm. It turned out to be negative, turned out to be benign. Right. That's good news. That is. Is do we mean the same thing when we talk about God's word as good news? Well, I think even in in both of your stories there, the car repair or the the biopsy, the reality is as we're going through life's journey and we feel the pull and the tug of life is that we're not going through that alone, right? The good news is that no matter what we have uh, struggled with in our life, God is always there with us. And so I may read scripture like Jesus telling us, love your neighbor as yourself. And I think, wow, that's pretty heavy. You know, I don't, I may aspire to do that, but I may not always be able to um, do that in a way that is um, maybe always making the mark every time. There may be someone cut me off in traffic and I may inside feel like, how dare you do that, right? But 
I know Are that I am your to as love them, in that moment? right? Because <laughs> they could be trying to get to the hospital mm. to find out the results of a biopsy or mm. to be biopsied, right? Because something crazy is mm. happening in that moment. And so I guess when I hear scripture and in the sermon, the hope is, is that we take those words and those experiences of people long ago. And again, we see how God is walking alongside of them. And Jesus is saying, yes, I understand that you have leprosy, um, but you're not on this journey alone. And God cares about your current situation. And then God is able to help them in one way or another God is present for them and active in that moment, right? And so maybe it's just that God is waiting with you during the time when you're waiting to find out, oh my gosh, how am I going to get my car repaired? Or how am I going to handle all the pieces of this medical treatment, right? God is walking along with us. So hopefully that good news is not like to us as we read scriptures, it's not it's not always judgment of, I didn't do enough, but it is, you're not alone, and I know that you're going to mess up sometimes. But that's why Jesus died on the cross, right? It's that reminder that Jesus is there for those moments. How is this then good news for the world? Mm. Or is it just good news for each of the world's people individually. That's that's good. No, I think it's it's good news for the world because I mean, it's easy to look around and to see everyone has shortcomings. Nobody can live up to um, following the law perfectly. Martin Luther is fond of saying that we are all sinners and saints, right? We all try, but we will all fall short. Nobody is perfect. We've heard those things said, right? But the reality is, and the good news is, and, and I think this is good news for everyone, I really do think it is that message that even while people were awful to Jesus, physically, emotionally terrible to him. In that moment, Jesus forgave them. Well, I think, too, about even the very planet. Mm. Um, what is God's good news for a planet that is beautiful and life-sustaining, but mm -hmm. as we know, in many ways... Struggling, um, yeah. Struggling, um, um, parts of the planet have been um, greatly exploited and mm -hmm. polluted and ruined. Right. And there's a lot of work to do. I think about some of these large, even cosmic concerns right. beyond my individual sure. needs. And I know that no matter how anxious I might be in the doctor's waiting room or in the waiting room of an auto repair place, that those are still small scope problems mm -hmm. compared to all of creation, right? And that God's word is not is not simply God's word for me alone, right? But for all of creation. Well, and I think that's the real challenge that a preacher has, right? We have this scripture, this ancient text that has. Um, we know, we can see the ways that God is working in and through those people and in those times. We're not as good at looking around our own world and seeing those same messages working in and through the world around us right now, right? And I think that's the real challenge that a preacher has when we get up to proclaim the good news or the gospel is to really make those two fit together, right? I mean, that's that's the job. That's the, the complication, and yet the joy of what we do is being able to sharpen our eyes to see God at work all around us, and then to imagine a, the future that God has in store for us. When you were speaking a few moments ago, um, a thought occurred to me 
as you speak about God being mm -hmm. with us and as you speak about the good news, mm -hmm. it seemed to me that there was very little, if any, air between those two. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, what occurred to me was, is there a difference between God and the good news about God or the good news that God speaks? Is the good news God's own self? Oh, well, definitely. Is, is yeah. hearing the good news, is that just another way of talking about apprehending the approach or the presence of God? Yeah, I think one of the most amazing things, you know, Scripture says when two or three are gathered together in my name, right, that I will be there in the midst of them. And I think that's the beauty of of coming to church, maybe hearing a sermon. Sometimes we can participate in the service online through some other means. We can still hear God's word proclaimed, um, but we are joined in the company of, of all the saints, right? Each time we listen to the word of God um, being open, expounding on the scriptures, the way that, you know, I love the image in the Bible of Jesus taking out the scrolls of the scriptures and then expounding on them in in the congregation in the synagogue where he was with folks right so there's there's biblical precedent that connects this world and helping um, us today experience something that Jesus himself experienced and was a part of back in his day it's this long history that connects us the scroll according to Luke's gospel that Jesus reads from that day is mm -hmm. the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah, yes, which talks about preaching good news to the poor. Right, right. And yet part of the response <laughs> Jesus arouses is right. a murderous hostility. <laughs> right. How we can, hope not how to can do that. good news... <laughs> drive us to murderous hostility. <laughs> well, that's that's what we all want to know, mm -hmm. so we don't do it, right? <laughs> no, but I think that, that the hope is that there is some conviction, right? So as Jesus is preaching good news to the poor, he's also helping those around him remember that we do fall short sometime, right? And, and none of us likes that mirror held up before us to say, yeah, you missed it this time, right? It very easily goes to, well, well, I couldn't have messed up. It's obviously that person over there. And so what Jesus is inviting us into is really, um, Scripture talks about not looking at someone else's faults, but really taking on our own. And I think that's what a sermon invites us into, walking together and also hearing that word, those words of challenge, and instead of saying, no, you must be wrong, I disagree with you, or having murderous feelings, like in that case, instead, there is this um, wonderful um, reminder for us all that there's room to grow. Well, and that connects to what you said a moment ago about the future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That... I think the Word of God opens to us mm -hmm. a future, mm -hmm. beckons us into it, embraces us in it. But to be directed toward a future also requires that we not be so obligated or captive to our present moment mm -hmm. that we really don't want the future. Right. We want the present perpetuated. Right. And in that way, we can experience sometimes God's word to us as um, a, a word of judgment, or the a past word that calls us to not make concessions to right. what is, mm -hmm. but to prefer what is yet to be. Yeah. I think, I think even not just the present, but some of us want to to hang on to the good old days, oh. whatever those were. And, yep. and, you know, we've done this thing, whatever it is, for generations. We can't quite give it up because, you know, we've always yeah. had this meal or this, 
you know, whatever tradition it was. And we want to keep that going even when maybe the purpose or the meaning of it has been lost. So that can be a difficult thing, right? Uh, we can feel challenged by that. And that's, I think, one of the wonderful things that sermons can do is to challenge us to get outside of that comfort zone and to really look at how is God calling us to be present to our world today? And then again, as you said, that future piece of and where are we going? Where's that long view that God sees that we can't quite see? Where is God inviting us into this uh, image of the world that God has uh, in mind for us that is full of such good things? There is a lot that we can talk about with this. <laughs> yes. um, but for now, we'll thank you for joining us in this particular episode in a new series of this podcast on preaching. I'm Paul Baglios. And I'm Ginger Bennett. This has been Two Pews in a Pod, a podcast led by the pastors of Evangelical Lutheran Church in Frederick, Maryland. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.